I have a rule for the show in which I avoid reviewing flavors or spins of other distros, such as Kubuntu or Fedora XFCE, because it winds up being redundant covering the same distro with just a different outfit on. Like, if I were to change from a nice t-shirt and a pair of slacks into a tank top with my favorite cutoff shorts. Lubuntu here was requested by a patron and a frequent livestream chatter and hanger outer, and I'm much more inclined to break my own rules for my patrons, so here we go. Lubuntu is a mess. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves, and if you did, all right, enough goofing around, let's get back on track. The installer is the venerable Calamares installer, and if you're keeping score at home, we've seen the Calamares installer much more than any other installer in the series so far. There's nothing particularly special about it, it's just a live session with the Calamares installer, which you've seen before. Once the thing is done installing, we'll drop to the login screen, which is uh, interesting to say the least. And we see the desktop for the first time, but don't bother waiting around because there's no welcome app. We'll hop on over to the terminal and see that DF is reporting 4.5 gigabytes eaten up by a fresh install and only 389 megabytes of memory being used by the distro. HTOP was installed by default. We see 74 tasks and 116 threads. Lubuntu is a crazy lightweight distro. So this desktop, it's LXQT, and if you're still calling it LXDE, you are wrong. The LXDE team decided to merge or otherwise consume the Razer Qt team, effectively rebranding Razer Qt as LXQT, or LXQt, I'm not really sure, as well as porting over some of their GTK apps to Qt, such as PC Man File Manager. Now I can't say that LXDE was ever really known for its great aesthetics, but LXQT sets the bar even lower than before. I can tell that the Lubuntu team really tried their best to make the desktop look uh, palatable, and for what it's worth, I think they did pretty okay. The colors and icons are good, but the wallpaper is unacceptable. My display is 1080p and this wallpaper is either stretched or the resolution is just bad. And LXQt has this really cool way of picking new backgrounds, so instead of like showing you a preview with the different backgrounds, it, you have to go to the file system and find them. And the backgrounds on offer were just kind of meh. There were a few good ones, but most of them were underwhelming. The default selection of apps was alright. There were many apps that were native to the LXQt project, but Lubuntu mixes in a couple of KDE apps as well. I tested suspend mode and it worked just fine, but it caused my Elgato to freak out and corrupt the video really bad, but trust me, it worked fine. And like HTOP, NeoFetch was installed by default, which was convenient. Lubuntu is Ubuntu 20.4 with kernel version 5.4.0 and 1,774 packages installed, none of which are snaps. The desktop environment is LXQt or QT with open box as the window manager and a customized arc theme with E papyrus icons. And being based on Ubuntu, every single test in the next segment passed. So what do we got here? We have the encrypted internal drive, the USB card with EXFAT, and the external Brunchmarks SSD. They all mounted and unmounted, dismounted, whatever, just fine, no issues at all. All of the file archive tests passed, including that non-free RAR file. All of the audio files played just fine with VLC. And the video files did all right too, though a couple of them acted a little glitchy at first, and that WebM file opened with Firefox. Next up, we've got our two app images, which both open just fine. The file manager asked if we wanted to execute them or run them from a terminal, which is a cool feature. Lubuntu uses KDE's Discover for app management, and it also has Muon, but the flap ref file opened in Discover, but couldn't be installed since there's no Flatpak support out of the box. That's pretty easy to set up and install anyway, though. I ran an update through Discover, but I noticed that the NVIDIA drivers were not pre-installed. This seems strange because of one of Ubuntu's recent big accomplishments is installing the NVIDIA drivers during the OS install, so why doesn't Lubuntu do that? I went ahead and installed those drivers, as well as installing Steam and OBS through Discover after the update completed. And all the OBS stuff worked just fine, NVENC was the encoder, the defaults were reasonable, so stay tuned for the Lubuntu livestream in a day or two. Networking in Lubuntu just sucked. There's no obvious way of uh, enabling DLNA or Samba file sharing, though DLNA discovery did work, as well as host name and IP resolution through Samba, though it asked me for my password to access the stream top twice before letting me in. Printer worked just great. It was configured and set up right out of the box without root, and much to my surprise, my troublesome Bluetooth controller connected the very first try. Wow. And the way the Geekbench scores, Lubuntu actually did better than Ubuntu on the multi-core side of things by a healthy amount. It also did better than vanilla Ubuntu on the GPU side of the house too. Pretty cool so far, but how about the gameplay? Well, just like my launch here, 
Dirt was awesome, scoring 41 frames a second in the benchmark compared to Ubuntu's 38, and running arguably the best out of all of the distros tested in the series so far. But weirdly, War Thunder only got 23 frames a second compared to Ubuntu's 26, and high in the sky it was a little choppy with all this stuff flying all over the place, but I don't know, there's a lot going on here, it felt alright. I didn't really notice anything major. And GTA ran pretty good, clocking in 20 frames a second the benchmark compared to Ubuntu's 18. It actually probably ran the best in the series so far, but not by like a huge amount, just enough. So yeah, calling Lubuntu a mess in the beginning was a joke, but it's not really that great either. I don't think it's Lubuntu's fault per se. LXQ is, uh, let's call it utilitarian. If you ever used Lubuntu way back in the Ubuntu trusty days, it used LXDE, and it was actually pretty good. People compared it to Xubuntu or Zubuntu or whatever as a sleek and lightweight Linux distro that looked good and felt good, being light on the resources. Lubuntu now is just light on the resources, that's it. In my opinion, Lubuntu actually slid backwards during the switch from LXDE to LXQt, but that's out of Lubuntu's control. They don't own the LX whatever project, you know? If nothing else, this video helps to illustrate why I don't give every Ubuntu flavor or Manjaro spin its own review. Functionality-wise, Lubuntu is practically the same as vanilla Ubuntu, just with a different skin on it. Most of my critiques are about the desktop, and this show is called Distro Delves, not Desktop Delves. I'm not opposed to doing a Desktop Delves sort of miniseries, though. If you guys can think up a good name for the series with alliteration that doesn't start with Ds, because, you know, Distro Delves is already there, I'd be down to try it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves, and if you did, you should stay tuned and subscribe to the channel because I do live stream encore episodes where I stream from the Distro Delves box right here and you guys can hang out with me while I do stuff and things. If you become a patron, you'll also be able to vote on the game I play during the stream too. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.